Melanoma, Wikipedia article audio. Melanoma, also known as malignant melanoma, is a type of cancer that develops from the pigment containing cells known as melanocytes. Melanomas typically occur in the skin, but may rarely occur in the mouth, intestines, or eye. In women, they most commonly occur on the legs, while in men they are most common on the back. Sometimes they develop from a mole with concerning changes including an increase in size, irregular edges, change in color, itchiness, or skin breakdown. Signs and Symptoms Cause UV Radiation Genetics Pathophysiology Diagnosis Ebbed Ugly duckling Biopsy Classification Laboratory Staging Prevention Avoiding ultraviolet radiation Sunscreen Treatment Surgery Add-on treatment Chemotherapy and immunotherapy Lentigo maligna Radiation therapy Prognosis Epidemiology Australia United States History the primary cause of melanoma is ultraviolet light exposure in those with low levels of skin pigment. The UV light may be from either the sun or from other sources, such as tanning devices. About 25% develop from moles. Those with many moles, a history of affected family members, and who have poor immune function are at greater risk. A number of rare genetic defects such as xeroderma pigmentosum also increase risk. Diagnosis is by biopsy of any concerning skin lesion. Research Targeted therapies Using sunscreen and avoiding UV light may prevent melanoma. Treatment is typically removal by surgery. In those with slightly larger cancers, nearby lymph nodes may be tested for spread. Most people are cured if spread has not occurred. For those in whom melanoma has spread, immunotherapy, biologic therapy, radiation therapy, or chemotherapy may improve survival. With treatment the five-year survival rates in the United States is 98% among those with localized disease and 17% among those in whom spread has occurred. The likelihood that it will come back or spread depends how thick the melanoma is, how fast the cells are dividing, and whether or not the overlying skin has broken down. BRAF Inhibitors Ipilimumab Melanoma is the most dangerous type of skin cancer. Globally, in 2012, it newly occurred in 232,000 people. In 2015 there were 3.1 million with active disease which resulted in 59,800 deaths. Australia and New Zealand have the highest rates of melanoma in the world. There are also high rates in Northern Europe and North America, while it is less common in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Melanoma is more common in men than women. Melanoma has become more common since the 1960s in areas which are mostly populated with white people. Early signs of melanoma are changes to the shape or color of existing moles or, in the case of nodular melanoma, the appearance of a new lump anywhere on the skin. At later stages, the mole may itch, ulcerate, or bleed. Early signs of melanoma are summarized by the mnemonic ABD. These classifications do not, however, apply to the most dangerous form of melanoma, nodular melanoma, which has its own classifications. 
Metastatic melanoma may cause nonspecific perineoplastic symptoms, including loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting and fatigue. Metastasis of early melanoma is possible, but relatively rare, less than a fifth of melanomas diagnosed early become metastatic. Brain metastases are particularly common in patients with metastatic melanoma. It can also spread to the liver, bones, abdomen or distant lymph nodes. Melanomas are usually caused by DNA damage resulting from exposure to ultraviolet light from the sun. Genetics also plays a role. Having more than 50 moles indicates an increased risk melanoma might arise. A weakened immune system makes it easier for cancer to arise due to the body's weakened ability to fight cancer cells. The ultraviolet radiation from tanning beds increases the risk of melanoma. The International Agency for Research on Cancer finds that tanning beds are carcinogenic to humans and that people who begin using tanning devices before the age of 30 years are 75% more likely to develop melanoma. Those who work in airplanes also appear to have an increased risk believed to be due to greater exposure to UV. Ultraviolet UVB light from the sun is absorbed by skin cell DNA and results in a type of direct DNA damage called cyclobutane pyrimidine dimers. Thymine thymine, cytosine cytosine or cytosine thymine dimers are formed by the joining of two adjacent pyrimidine bases within a DNA strand. Somewhat similarly to UVB, UV light from the sun or from tanning beds can also be directly absorbed by skin DNA. Studies suggest that exposure to ultraviolet radiation and UVB is one of the major contributors to the development of melanoma. Occasional extreme sun exposure is causally related to melanoma. Melanoma is most common on the back in men and on legs in women. The risk appears to be strongly influenced by socioeconomic conditions rather than indoor versus outdoor occupations, it is more common in professional and administrative workers than unskilled workers. Other factors are mutations in or total loss of tumor suppressor genes. Use of sunbeds has been linked to the development of skin cancers, including melanoma. Possible significant elements in determining risk include the intensity and duration of sun exposure, the age at which sun exposure occurs, and the degree of skin pigmentation. Melanoma rates tend to be highest in countries settled by migrants from northern Europe that have a large amount of direct, intense sunlight that the skin of the settlers is not adapted to, most notably Australia. Exposure during childhood is a more important risk factor than exposure in adulthood. This is seen in migration studies in Australia. Having multiple severe sunburns increases the likelihood that future sunburns develop into melanoma due to cumulative damage. The sun and tanning beds are the main sources of UV radiation that increase the risk for melanoma and living close to the equator increases exposure to UV radiation. A number of rare mutations, which often run in families, greatly increase melanoma susceptibility. Several genes increase risks. Some rare genes have a relatively high risk of causing melanoma. Some more common genes, such as a gene called MC1R that causes red hair, have a relatively lower elevated risk. Genetic testing can be used to search for the mutations. One class of mutations affects the gene CDKN2A. An alternative reading frame mutation in this gene leads to the destabilization of P53 a transcription factor involved in apoptosis and in 50% of human cancers. Another mutation in the same gene results in a non-functional inhibitor of CDK4, a cyclin-dependent kinase that promotes cell division. 
Mutations that cause the skin condition xeroderma pigmentosum also increase melanoma susceptibility. Scattered throughout the genome, these mutations reduce a cell's ability to repair DNA. Both CDKN2A and XP mutations are highly penetrant. Familial melanoma is genetically heterogeneous, and loci for familial melanoma appear on the chromosome arms 1P, 9P, and 12 Quetzales. Multiple genetic events have been related to melanoma's pathogenesis. The multiple tumor suppressor 1 gene encodes P16 Inc 4A a low molecular weight protein inhibitor of cyclin-dependent protein kinases which has been localized to the P21 region of human chromosome 9. Other mutations confer lower risk, but are more common in the population. People with mutations in the MC1R gene, for example, are two to four times more likely to develop melanoma than those with two wild-type copies. MC1R mutations are very common, in fact, all red-haired people have a mutated copy. Mutation of the MDM2 SNP309 gene is associated with increased risks for younger women. Fair and red-haired people Persons with multiple atypical nevi or dysplastic nevi and persons born with giant congenital melanocytic nevi are at increased risk. A family history of melanoma greatly increases a person's risk because mutations in several genes have been found in melanoma-prone families. People with a history of one melanoma are at increased risk of developing a second primary tumor. Fair skin is the result of having less melanin in the skin, which means there is less protection from UV radiation. A family history could indicate a genetic predisposition to melanoma. The earliest stage of melanoma starts when melanocytes begin out of control growth. Melanocytes are found between the outer layer of the skin and the next layer. This early stage of the disease is called the radial growth phase, when the tumor is less than 1 mm thick. Because the cancer cells have not yet reached the blood vessels deeper in the skin, it is very unlikely that this early stage melanoma will spread to other parts of the body. If the melanoma is detected at this stage, then it can usually be completely removed with surgery. When the tumor cells start to move in a different direction vertically up into the epidermis and into the papillary dermis cell behavior changes dramatically. The next step in the evolution is the invasive radial growth phase, which is a confusing term, however, it explains the process of the radial growth, in which individual cells start to acquire invasive potential. From this point on the melanoma is capable of spreading. The Breslow's depth of the lesion is usually less than 1 mm, while the Clark level is usually 2. The vertical growth phase following is the invasive melanoma. The tumor becomes able to grow into the surrounding tissue and can spread around the body through blood or lymph vessels. The tumor thickness is usually more than 1 mm and the tumor involves the deeper parts of the dermis. The host elicits an immunological reaction against the tumor during the VGP, which is judged by the presence and activity of the tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. These cells sometimes completely destroy the primary tumor, this is called regression, which is the latest stage of development. In certain cases, the primary tumor is completely destroyed and only the metastatic tumor is discovered. About 40% of human melanomas contain activating mutations affecting the structure of the BRAF protein, resulting in constitutive signaling through the RAF to MAP kinase pathway. In general, cancers are caused by damage to DNA. Uva light mainly causes thymine-thymine dimers. Uva also produces reactive oxygen species and these inflict other DNA damage, 
primarily single-strand brakes, oxidized pyrimidines, and the oxidized purine 8-oxyguanine at one-tenth, one-tenth and one-third the frequencies of UVA-induced thymine-thymine dimers, respectively. If unrepaired, CPD photo products can lead to mutations by inaccurate translesion synthesis during DNA replication or repair. The most frequent mutations due to inaccurate synthesis past CPDs are cytosine to thymine or CCTT transition mutations. These are commonly referred to as UV fingerprint mutations, as they are the most specific mutation caused by UV being frequently found in sun-exposed skin but rarely found in internal organs. Errors in DNA repair of UV photo products, or inaccurate synthesis past these photo products, can also lead to deletions, insertions and chromosomal translocations. The entire genomes of 25 melanomas were sequenced. On average, about 80,000 mutated bases and about 100 structural rearrangements were found per melanoma genome. This is much higher than the approximately 70 mutations across generations. Among the 25 melanomas, about 6,000 protein coding genes had missense, nonsense, or splice site mutations. The transcriptomes of over 100 melanomas has also been sequenced and analyzed. Almost 70% of all human protein coding genes are expressed in melanoma. Most of these genes are also expressed in other normal and cancer tissues, with some 200 genes showing a more specific expression pattern in melanoma compared to other forms of cancer. Examples of melanoma-specific genes are tyrosinase, MLNA, and PMEL. Asymmetry, B orders, C or diameter, about the size of a pencil eraser, evolving over time. Surveillance methods Oncolytic virotherapy Elevated above the skin surface, FIRM to the touch, G rowing a symmetrical skin lesion, B order of the lesion is irregular, C -olar. melanomas usually have multiple colors D. Iometer, moles greater than 6 mm are more likely to be melanomas than smaller moles, E enlarging, enlarging or evolving. Elevated, the lesion is raised above the surrounding skin, FIRM. The nodule is solid to the touch, G rowing, the nodule is increasing in size. Lentigo maligna, lentigo maligna melanoma, superficial spreading melanoma, acral lentiginous melanoma, mucosal melanoma, nodular melanoma, polypoid melanoma, desmoplastic melanoma. Melanoma with small nevus like cells. Melanoma with features of a Spitz nevus, uveal melanoma, vaginal melanoma. T1A, less than 1 mm primary tumor thickness, without ulceration, and mitosis. 1 in 10 of all new cancer cases were melanomas. Melanoma incidence in Australia is matter of significance, for the following reasons. In the United States about 9,000 people die from melanoma a year. In 2011 it affected 19.7 per 100,000, and resulted in death in 2.7 per 100,000. In 2013 the American Cancer Society's estimates for melanoma incidence in the United States for 2017 are Melanoma is more than 20 times more common in whites than Indiana African Americans. Overall, the lifetime risk of getting melanoma is about 2.5% for whites, 0.1% for African Americans, and 0.5% for Hispanics. The risk of melanoma increases as people age. 
The average age of people when the disease is diagnosed is 63. Although melanoma is not a new disease, evidence for its occurrence in antiquity is rather scarce. However, one example lies in a 1960s examination of nine Peruvian mummies, radiocarbon dated to be approximately 2,400 years old, which showed apparent signs of melanoma, melanotic masses in the skin and diffuse metastases to the bones. John Hunter is reported to be the first to operate on metastatic melanoma in 1787. Although not knowing precisely what it was, he described it as a cancerous fungus excrescence. The excised tumor was preserved in the Hunterian Museum of the Royal College of Surgeons of England. It was not until 1968 that microscopic examination of the specimen revealed it to be an example of metastatic melanoma. The French physician René Lanik was the first to describe melanoma as a disease entity. His report was initially presented during a lecture for the Faculté de Médecine de Paris in 1804 and then published as a bulletin in 1806. The first English-language report of melanoma was presented by an English general practitioner from Storbridge, William Norris in 1820. In his later work in 1857 he remarked that there is a familial predisposition for development of melanoma. Norris was also a pioneer in suggesting a link between nevi and melanoma and the possibility of a relationship between melanoma and environmental exposures, by observing that most of his patients had pale complexions. He also described that melanomas could be amelanotic and later showed the metastatic nature of melanoma by observing that they can disseminate to other visceral organs. The first formal acknowledgement of advanced melanoma as untreatable came from Samuel Cooper in 1840. He stated that the only chance for a cure depends upon the early removal of the disease. More than one and a half centuries later this situation remains largely unchanged. The word melanoma is from the Greek mu lambda alpha melos meaning dark. Pharmacotherapy research for unresectable or metastatic malignant melanoma is ongoing. In clinical research setting other therapies, such as adoptive cell therapy or gene therapy, are being tested. Two kinds of experimental treatments developed at the National Cancer Institute, have been used in metastatic melanoma with tentative success. The first treatment involves adoptive cell therapy using TILS immune cells isolated from a person's own melanoma tumor. These cells are grown in large numbers in a laboratory and returned to the patient after a treatment that temporarily reduces normal T cells in the patient's body. TIL therapy following lymphodepletion can result in durable complete response in a variety of setups. The second treatment, adoptive transfer of genetically altered autologous lymphocytes, depends on delivering genes that encode so-called T-cell receptors, into patients' lymphocytes. After that manipulation lymphocytes recognize and bind to certain molecules found on the surface of melanoma cells and kill them. A vaccine to train the immune system to fight cancer showed modest benefit in late-stage testing in 2009 against melanoma. About 60% of melanomas contain a mutation in the BRAF gene. Early clinical trials suggested that BRAF inhibitors including plexicons vemurafenib could lead to substantial tumor regression in a majority of patients if their tumor contained the BRAF mutation. In June 2011, a large clinical trial confirmed the positive findings from those earlier trials. In August 2011 Vemurafenib received FDA approval for the treatment of late-stage melanoma. 
In May 2013 the US FDA approved dabrafenib as a single agent treatment for patients with BRAFV600E mutation positive advanced melanoma. Some researchers believe that combination therapies that simultaneously block multiple pathways may improve efficacy by making it more difficult for the tumor cells to mutate before being destroyed. In October 2012 a study reported that combining dabrafenib with a MEK inhibitor trametinib led to even better outcomes. Compared to dabrafenib alone, progression-free survival was increased to 41% from 9%, and the median progression-free survival increased to 9.4 months versus 5.8 months. Some side effects were, however, increased in the combined study. In January 2014, the FDA approved the combination of dabrafenib and trametinib for the treatment of patients with BRAFV600E-K mutant metastatic melanoma. Eventual resistance to BRAF and MEK inhibitors may be due to a cell surface protein known as EPHA2 which is now being investigated. At the American Society of Clinical Oncology Conference in June 2010, the Bristol Myers Squibb Pharmaceutical Company reported the clinical findings of their drug ipilimumab. The study found an increase in median survival from 6.4 to 10 months in patients with advanced melanomas treated with the monoclonal ipilimumab, versus an experimental vaccine. It also found a one-year survival rate of 25% in the control group using the vaccine, 44% in the vaccine and ipilimumab group, and 46% in the group treated with ipilimumab alone. However, some have raised concerns about this study for its use of the unconventional control arm, rather than comparing the drug against a placebo or standard treatment. The criticism was that although ipilimumab performed better than the vaccine, the vaccine has not been tested before and may be causing toxicity, making the drug appear better by comparison. Ipilimumab was approved by the FDA in March 2011 to treat patients with late-stage melanoma that has spread or cannot be removed by surgery. In June 2011, a clinical trial of ipilimumab plus dacarbazine combined this immune system booster with the standard chemotherapy drug that targets cell division. It showed an increase in median survival for these late-stage patients to 11 months instead of the 9 months normally seen. Researchers were also hopeful that perhaps 10-20% of patients could live a long time. Some serious side effects of revving up the immune system were seen in some patients. A course of treatment costs $120,000. The drug's brand name is Yervoy. Advances in high-resolution ultrasound scanning have enabled surveillance of metastatic burden to the sentinel lymph nodes. The screening and surveillance of ultrasound in melanoma trial is evaluating ultrasound as an alternative to invasive surgical methods. In some countries oncolytic virotherapy methods are studied and used to treat melanoma. Oncolytic virotherapy is a promising branch of virotherapy, where oncolytic viruses are used to treat diseases, viruses can increase metabolism reduce anti-tumor immunity and disorganize vasculature. Talamogeny Leherparapvec, was shown to be useful against metastatic melanoma in 2015 with an increased survival of 4.4 months. The Dictionary Definition of Melanoma at Wiktionary Media related to melanoma at Wikimedia Commons